Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa's Meerkat Radio Telescope Array has contributed to a significant discovery in the Milky Way. Rebecca Campbell joins us to discuss these developments. Hi Rebecca. What is the Meerkat and what is its link to the global radio astronomy community? Well, Meerkat is South Africa's national radio telescope array. It's composed of 64 dishes located in the Northern Cape province. Uh, in the Karoo region of the Northern Cape. It's about 80 kilometers west of a little town called Carnarvon. And it is of enormous importance uh, to the international radio astronomy uh, community. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, radio telescope array in the world at the moment. And that makes it one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, radio astronomy instrument available to the global radio astronomy community uh, today. And so there's a lot of demand from international uh, researchers for air time on the Meerkat. The other thing is that the Meerkat is located in the Southern Hemisphere, and that gives it access uh, to some of the most important phenomena uh, that can be observed from Earth. Uh, as a example relevant, precisely relevant to this research, is that it's much easier to observe the center of the Milky Way from the Southern Hemisphere. In fact, the center of the Milky Way is pretty much directly over South Africa. Uh, other examples, uh, the closest um, galaxies to us outside the Milky Way proper, the satellite galaxies the Milky Way, and they're known as the Greater and Lesser Magellanic Clouds, are only observable from the Southern Hemisphere. And there are other important phenomena that are either better observed from the Southern Hemisphere or only observable from the Southern Hemisphere. So it's an incredibly powerful instrument in a part of the world which gives access to really important astronomical and astrophysical phenomena. What can you tell us about this new discovery in the Milky Way? Well, it's in the center, and it takes a form basically of two gigantic bubbles uh, above and below the center of the Milky Way. Now, in the center of the Milky Way, there is a black hole, a supermassive black hole. Um, the one in the center of our galaxy uh, is relatively quiescent. In other galaxies, they have supermassive black holes, which are incredibly uh, energetic, uh, lots of things going on around them. Uh, but in the case of ours, uh, nothing much dramatic is happening uh, at, when say, at the moment. Obviously, um, we have the speed limit of the speed of light in the vacuum. And so when we look uh, at the center of, the, uh, of our galaxy, we're not seeing what's happening now. We're seeing what's happening an awful long time ago in the past. But it is clear th these two uh, bubbles have been detected because they emit radio waves. And it is clear that something dramatic happened uh, in the past which caused uh, these bubbles to form to erupt up and down from the center of the Milky Way. Uh, something, uh, possibly a large amount of uh, interstellar dust or gas or some other uh, significant source of mass uh, fell into the black hole. And you had the, the uh, Basically, I suppose you could say a kind of shockwave effect above and below it, creating these gigantic bubbles of uh, magnetized um, gas, basically. They've never been observed before. So this is a new phenomenon. And they're associated with a phenomenon that was discovered 35 years ago, but nobody could work out how it uh, came to being. And this phenomenon, the 35-year-old 
discovery, it was of very, very long, tens of light years long, but very narrow uh, filaments, which again were emitting radio waves. Uh, and now these filaments are almost entirely encompassed within these bubbles. So it looks like the event that created the bubbles also created the filaments. So this is not only the discovery of a new phenomenon, it also suggests an explanation for a puzzling phenomenon that had previously been discovered. Uh, no, it, it, it's a great discovery, there's no question. It, it increases our knowledge of what's going on in the center of our galaxy, and by extension, gives us an idea of what uh, can be happening in the center of other galaxies as well. Radio astronomy can also play a significant role in promoting education. Oh yes, there's, there's no question about that. It's, it's these incredibly dramatic discoveries, these incredibly dramatic images they can produce. Well, one of the paradoxes, of course, is that we can see radio waves. So the images we get from radio astronomy are created by processing data. So that it came, comes up with an image that we can see, but they can be incredibly dramatic. And they can uh, get uh, global attention. Um, they encourage people, they inform people, and they encourage young people with an interest in science. And by extension, also mathematics and technology and engineering, because Radio astronomy involves science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, the uh, radio telescopes have to be designed and built. They have to use technology. So they're technological artifacts, engineering artifacts, as well as scientific artifacts. And um, the Im impact of these discoveries well, the, the classic recent case was the announcement of the image of the black hole in the center of the M87 galaxy. Uh, that, uh, well, of course, technically it wasn't an image of the black hole because the black hole is invisible, but the scientists called it an image of the shadow of the black hole surrounded by a halo of light. Uh, that was on front pages of newspapers all over the world after they announced that and released the image. It had a tremendously dramatic effect. So yes, radio astronomy does have, not merely can have, does have a big in impact on stimulating interest in science, in uh, promoting education, but also uh, stimulating interest in technology and engineering, and of course everything is underlaid by mathematics. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.